Welcome to this Care Collab video on Vanda Denisoniana. Today I am joined by Orchidea, the Orchid Saga, and plants and other things. I wanted to start this video off with where my Denisoniana lives, and that will give you a good idea as to how I take care of her all year round, pretty much, because I find her an extremely demanding orchid. So, I wanted to start this video out by showing you where my Denisoniana lives. This is very important for me because otherwise it's very, very difficult to explain because it also factors in her care. Well, first of all, a lot of airflow, as you can see. She is facing south to the left. That is south. Our perspective is east and then west is at the far end there. So in the morning, when the sun rises, she gets blasted with sunshine no matter the time of year just the morning sun though. When it comes to the hottest months of the year, the angle of the sun is so high, she only gets morning sun and then she is in shade for the rest of the day. Those are the months from June through mid-September. So she has a lot more shade during the summer than she would have any other time of year. You can see now that it is somewhat late afternoon and the sun is lower in the sky and is hitting her directly. But because of the high airflow, she can handle the heat of the sun. Now, yes, we are in October. By November, December, January, the sun will have weakened a lot more. So it's not a problem. The amount of hours of sunlight that she gets here in my climate in southern Spain. I would not recommend putting this orchid in such bright sunshine if you have extremely hot temperatures. My temperatures range from 5 degrees Celsius in the winter at night all the way up to 40 degrees Celsius with extremely dry, hot winds. I don't have the humidity that this orchid would prefer. She would prefer 60 to 65 percent humidity. I am lucky if I can get 40 percent average when it is the hottest time of year. But as you can see, airflow is not a problem and that is what she really, really appreciates. You can find her not just in Southern Spain <laughs> with me, but you can also find her Southeastern Asia and Southwestern parts of the Yunnan province of China, which coincidentally seems to be an orchid heaven because I have another orchid that originates from that area. So. That'll be another care collab, but yeah, Denisoniana. I'm going to take her down now because if you're still here and if you're interested, I have made a lot of mistakes with her, especially this year. Some forced errors and some, well, collateral damage, I would say, based on circumstances. But let me tell you how I got her to bloom because you can see the size of the orchid. She is enormous. She has a leaf span of more than 30 centimeters per leaf and only this year did I get her to bloom. Let me tell you how I did that. I think it was more a coincidence than it was what I know to do. But let me share that with you. I'm gonna take her down. We'll go on the west side, then I don't have to be shouting so much because again, lots of airflow here today. <laughs> this is the light the Danisoniano much more prefers. Dappled sun, high airflow, just because of the heating up of the leaves, the air would cool the leaves down. Because she doesn't get much humidity in my climate, this is how I water her. Especially on a day like this, it can be four to five times a day. Now I'm lucky or unlucky, depending on how you want to see it, that I have the time to do this. In the past, I had a Vanda tub with 150 liters of RO water, which I used to change out every week with 300 parts per million of fertilizer at 6.3 pH. And she used to get dunked and soaked for hours, especially in the summer. I could have left her there three to four hours, absolutely not a problem. But this summer, and this is why you're seeing the state of my roots, I had an RO water supply issue. So I started to go 50-50 with my mains water. Even though I let my mains water stand, for over 24 hours before mixing it up with my RO water, I struggled and you can see the damage it has caused to the roots. The next thing that has happened as well, let me get you in a little bit closer. I hope it shows on camera. I'm at a bad angle, but I have black spotting on her leaves. And that's concerning because I had another Vanda that has black spotting as well. And I don't like them. I don't want them to spread. So I'm really, really hoping you see them. If not, I'll take a picture and insert it. 
So I treated her with copper, a copper fungicide that I used for years and years and years successfully. <laughs> Until this year, I was anticipating torrential rain and I thought, right, this is the time I'm going to deal with it because I don't want these spots to spread. So I overdosed her on the copper front. The rains never came and I couldn't flush the stuff off quick enough. It had already done the damage. This was after she bloomed, and she bloomed for me at the beginning of June, which is ideal for this vanda. She blooms late spring or in fall. Now, I am not so lucky to be able to show you a second bloom spike. That would have been nice, but after everything she's been through, the fact that she is growing very, very well, despite all the stress, I am very grateful because all this up here, from where the bloom spike was, all of this is new growth since June. And it was during the summer that she had to deal with my radical or rogue water, <laughs> or lack thereof, let's just say. And she's also developing a fabulous keiki, despite my copper debacle later in the summer. So there we go. I mean, this keiki is just rocketing off. It's doing superbly, which is a mystery to me. I am not complaining. It's just I sometimes like to understand why it is possible for an orchid to do well even though there were problems and issues in the culture and yet others don't it's something that i'm trying to figure out for myself maybe one day i can do a video because i've found the answer but you can see that my vanda here is extremely demanding the roots are now all the way down hello king there to the right all the way down but you see that the color still isn't perfect. These were the affected roots with the copper treatment. They went a horrible, to some degree also black. That is not dead algae. They literally turned kind of spongy and black, but they're still firm. They're not dead. This is what I would like my roots to look like. This. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, I tell you. What a shame. However, I did get blooms while I'm standing here. I will multitask. I did get blooms from her. She bloomed for me this year for the very first time. The reason I also think was that it was a stress factor when I started having issues with my RO water. I got her when she was about this high. And you would think, well, that's a good size banda. And then all the years after that, year two, year three that she's with me, she bloomed up here, only one spike. But what a show that was. And what a pleasure that was as well, because she turned out not to be mislabeled. <laughs> I was very nervous. I didn't want to have to have to pay for a Denisoniana and then three years later say, well, gee, who are you? Beautiful, beautiful, creamy, white, butter, yellow blooms. Very waxy, very sturdy, and so fragrant. I hear a lot that they smell like vanilla. I couldn't detect any vanilla at all. I detected a honeysuckle that was so in your nose. I could smell her through the breeze in my blooming alley. And you could see where she lives, how far that perfume would reach. Absolutely gorgeous blooms from behind, even the bloom stem, the whole thing, amazing and long lasting. I think I got five weeks out of my blooms where they looked perfect and then another week 10 days where they still looked fine but they weren't as fresh anymore so that's pretty good going and that fragrance never stopped except at night yeah at night i didn't get the fragrance anymore but that's why i showed you where she lived before because with a breeze like that and the perfume in the air it's pretty incredible i can now say yes she was worth the money that i paid for but I'm telling you that if you're looking for a vigorous blooming vanda and you don't have the perfect, perfect conditions, the Denisoniana is a beast. She takes up a lot of space. So I mentioned earlier that my temperatures can go down to five degrees Celsius in the winter at night, but they have a steady 17 to 18 during the daytime in the winter. So she is in her element temperature wise in my climate because where she comes from, she can go down to nine degrees Celsius and I've tested her out. She has been outside with me in the past winters when I didn't have space indoors because as her roots grow, yes, I have a stool that she normally sits on, but they're just getting longer and longer. So she's getting harder and harder to accommodate. I will also not be having a Vanda tub in the future to be able to accommodate her and soak her. 
So this is what is going to be happening from here on in. And if she gets too big and too cumbersome, then I will have to consider giving my Denisoniano away because there's only so much I can do. With the long roots here, one could actually say, yes, chop them off, make it easier. But that is not recommended. Much luck and Graycombs, Denisoniana has a reputation to being finicky, fussy about the roots. Cutting the roots to make her more manageable could set the orchid back from blooming another two and three years. And who wants that? It's tough enough to get this one to bloom anyway. I know that my light isn't absolutely perfect and I do hope that in this instance though, you can still hear me and well, there's a vanda there in, <laughs> in the viewfinder. When it comes to fertilizer, you can imagine when it is a day like this on airflow, this is a day where I would not fertilize her at all. I just throw fresh RO water at her every time I water because if I were to fertilize her on a day like this, I would get salt and mineral burn on the roots. Even though I've already done enough damage to my roots in 2021, I do not want to exacerbate the problem and make it worse. So she has been very, very conservatively fertilized over the past three weeks because these are the winds of change. The summer is changing into fall. We've got fall and it, it's all a big windy mess at the moment. And it's back to very stressful times, making sure that all the orchids stay on their shelves. So on days as windy as they are today, including the summer, it doesn't matter what time of year, I do not fertilize at all. When the days are a little bit more agreeable with regards to airflow, I will fertilize at 300 parts per million. But then I'm with her, fertilizing her almost every 30 minutes as I do my rounds, checking my orchids in the morning. Every 30 minutes, I will push with 300 parts per million, keeping the roots wet at all times, not letting them dry out, avoiding the salt buildup as best as possible. And then of course, afterwards, I will go again, probably in about three hours, and drench her down once more with plain RO water. It's been a very, very stressful summer with this Denisoniana in particular, because again, I had no way of soaking her because of my RO water supply issues. High, high maintenance orchid. When I thought bifoliate cattleyas were divas, well, in the Vanda category, I considered the Denisoniana the highest maintenance orchid that I've got. Not complaining, I wanted her, I knew what I was up against, but worst case scenario, when you don't have the water, this is a big, big problem because they are very, very thirsty, especially when in active growth. Now heading into winter with the temperatures dropping, you can see how radical I am with my sprayer. All of that is gonna dry out. If I talk to you for another 30 minutes, the Vanda is dry. <laughs> Trust me, don't worry, I won't do that. With this airflow, I can really push. I don't have to worry about water in the crown, in the leaf joints or anything. In the winter, I am a little bit more careful. If the days are cooler, around 17, 18 degrees, I will focus the entire spraying around the root ball only. And that is also when I reduce a little bit the fertilizer because clearly she's growing a little bit slower. It's not like she stops growing. Even in her native habitat, she wouldn't stop growing. But when you get temperatures of nine degrees, 10 degrees Celsius at night, everybody stops growing except us because we're eating comfort food. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just had to put that in there. <laughs> Let me just correct that, me, <laughs> including me. Anyway, back to the Denisoniana. But yeah, the amount of water I can throw at her from April through to the end of October, I can't throw enough at her. I don't have the time. That is how thirsty she is. I'm gonna have to see what I can fandangle for 2022 if I want to keep this orchid, because the bigger she gets, the more demanding she becomes. And then it's a question of, can I do her justice? Let's put it that way. I'm actually thinking of putting this Vanda in a terracotta pot, making a proper nice display out of it and making it my outdoor orchid in a pot where I can possibly accommodate her. But it's going to be a spectacular pot, something beautiful, decorative with lots and lots of holes in it. Then she becomes an outdoor plant and I could possibly, possibly keep her in my collection and make her happy long term. 
I hope that you found this video useful. And I also want to thank Plants and Other Things for getting in touch with regards to would I organize a care collab for the Denisoniana. Orchidea, the Orchid Saga, thank you to both of you as well for joining us on this care collab. Your time is much appreciated. And links to the videos are in the description below to the channels I've just mentioned. And I'm sure we're going to see some great setups that are probably a little bit more user-friendly than what I have right now. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do and maybe, maybe I can apply it for next year. Thank you very much once again for watching. Your time is very much appreciated, especially when a video isn't quite to my liking light-wise. <laughs> but I do have a deadline. We've got to upload this video. So please stay safe. Thank you for your patience with me. Really appreciate it. <laughs> have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.